lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you today? Pretty good. So we're a couple days late. Yeah. Just... Eh, eh, it happens. Yeah. Hey, getting some content out. Yeah. We're doing really well this year. <laughs> I hate to jinx us. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a storm out there. There is a storm out there. Um, actually, and that, I should probably start with that. Uh, I work in property insurance. Yeah. So, um, could so get tough. Start, yeah, starting <laughs> next week, I could be working like hundred hour weeks for a while. Man, I hope not. I hope this thing's just going to fizzle. I, it ain't looking that way though. It's not coming here though. Oh, you say that. Well, it, I, it's, shifted. it's not coming here. Well, I Gary. hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're right. But the models moved it today. So, Oh man. Yeah. Um, I, I am concerned. It's looking like Central Florida, though. <laughs> yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> shut, shut up. <laughs> Just telling you. Um, <sighs> you can't come here. I haven't gotten my trees cut down yet. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't come here. I, I, I feel like I'm just getting back recovered from Sally, man. Like, uh, well. Had a lot of property damage. It's not coming here. <laughs> I hope you're right. It's not coming here. <laughs> you keep saying that. <laughs> right. Well, that's this what I was talking to um, a girl at my office uh, on Friday, and I was doing the same thing that you were doing, and she kept repeating more forcefully that it was not coming here. So I, I understood what she was going for. You yeah. seem to be missing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> oh. uh, but uh, anyway, it, regardless of whether it comes here or not, um, You're gonna see more work. Yeah, more than likely. I could, I unless could be, it just fizzles. Yeah, I could be really busy. I mean, they're they're thinking it's gonna be a category three or something when it makes landfall. So not if it fizzles. Not if it fizzles. <laughs> I'm putting all my eggs in that basket, man. <laughs> okay. No, just just hope it doesn't come here, man. Like, no. let's. <laughs> I don't want nobody. I don't want nobody to deal with it. Well, I, no, I agree. Um, but one of these things is more likely than the other. Well. <laughs> You got to you got to play the statistics in your wishful thinking. Oh, is that right? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Maybe that's been the problem with my wishful wishful thinking all of my life. I just haven't played the statistics correctly. Yeah, yeah. you got to know the odds. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> um. So we uh, we weren't really sure what to talk about. Um. And I think so. I asked. Uh, I asked Liberty Lair the other day. I was like, "Have we ever actually talked about the the I guess the philosophical underpinnings of the statement that we make over and over and over again on the podcast that taxation is theft?" Yeah, I, I don't know that we have. Yeah. I don't. I don't recall ever really getting down in the weeds on that one. Yeah, I can't remember having ever really talked about it. We just kind of took it as a given. Yeah, everybody understands well, that, I mean, right? They should, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> So um, we thought that we would take uh, that as a starting point to kind of, um, you know, talk about a, you know, a philosophy of government. Or I, I actually, honestly, it's really more of a moral philosophy yeah. um, that kind of uh, girds libertarianism um, and, uh, and hopefully give you guys a little bit more insight into where we're coming from and why we think the way we do and why we approach these issues and in the manner that we do and and so forth. I hope that sounds interesting to you. <laughs> it is interesting, I, I think. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, taxation is theft. Like, I, I think the starting point here um, is um, is self-ownership. Yeah. Like, what, like everything else, um, when we start talking about, you know, the philosophy um, that, that guides us, uh, is that you start with self-ownership. Um, the idea that, um, that nobody has a greater moral claim on you than you. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, is it seems like just kind of common sense to me. Like that's like, wouldn't you want that? Like, how do you argue against that? Yeah. Well, then people start bringing, well, what about children? And you know, they can't make decisions for yourself, but all right. Ch like, yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll address nuance later. Okay. Um, but at least from the starting point, uh, well, and of course you could go with the, um, that each, each individual belongs to God. Yeah. Right. Like that's okay. another, that's I another mean, that's, way of starting, uh, in the, in more or less the same place. But to me, that's still, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. But you still make the decision to devote yourself to that. Yeah, and you, you, it's not, you know, God may guide you, but really when it comes down to it, you're the one that's making your decisions about you're, your life. You're calling the shots. Yeah. And I mean, and, and I believe in making that commitment and that mm-hmm. choice. I mean, I, I, I think that's a good one. Yeah. But like I say, it's still, you're still consciously making that commitment. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could make the opposite commitment, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, uh, you know, the whole, uh, at least, um, at least Western religion, I think, for the most part, uh, does, um, you know, does believe in um, in freedom of choice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, that you're not exactly beholden to your creator, creator in the sense that they don't they don't rule your life directly. Yeah, right? like you still have your individual choices that you make. Absolutely. Um, now and and I would say like from that starting point of self ownership and like obviously if we can't agree on that then the rest of this isn't going to have any meaning to you whatsoever but yeah. <laughs> um but listen anyway just so that you can understand what we're thinking yeah um individual sovereignty um the the idea that 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 the individual is the ultimate unit of society um is uh the basis of Western representative government yeah All right. So, um, government authority is actually transferred from the individual. Like the government doesn't have its own authority. The, the idea of Western government is that the individuals got together and made an agreement that they would transfer some of their individual authority to the government in order to help them, um, maintain a peaceful coexistence. Yeah. That's really it. Um, and you know, you see it in the, uh, in the uh, Declaration of Independence, this idea um, that um, you know that the government authority is granted by the people, but what that means is, like, or as a consequence of that, um, government cannot have any authority that an individual does not. Yeah, because you can't transfer authority to somebody that you don't, an authority that you don't already have. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. So uh, there's there's no uh, authority that government has that that transcends or is greater than um, the authority that indi- any individual has. Um, all you've done uh, by granting authority to government is giving up some authority that you have for yourself as a collective to the government to hopefully manage better. Yeah, I would say historically <laughs> speaking, there's not a lot of evidence that they manage it better, but um, that's the idea. Yeah, that's the idea. And so uh, that's where the idea of taxation as theft comes from, um, is that if you cannot transfer any authority to the government that you don't already have, if I do not have the authority to take money from you, to coerce you into giving me your money, however you want to look at it. Yeah. I mean, because the, the truth is that, that we're not all voluntarily giving our tax money to the government. Yeah, um, It's being taken from us by force or threat of force. Uh and even if you, if there are things that you believe the government needs money to get to to do, and you're okay with doing that, I'm sure that there are also things that the government's doing that you don't agree with, and you would rather not give your money to that. So if you yeah. believe that you know government needs to build roads and government needs to maintain the court system and the judicial system and the um, law enforcement system and so forth, and you believe that. Um, that it, they need your money to do that, and so you're okay with giving that portion of your money. Um, do you also believe that the government has to uh, be fighting in Afghanistan and Syria and Somalia and so on and so forth and giving billions of dollars in weaponry to uh, the um, government of Ukraine and so forth? I, I'm, I'm betting there's at least a few things out there that the government does that you don't agree with. I think that... I think even people who support what people will refer to as statist who mm-hmm. believe in government mm-hmm. can find stuff that the government does that they don't agree with. I, I think there's very few people in this country that agrees with absolutely everything the government does. Yeah. So, I mean, at some point you've got to be on board here on some level. Mm-hmm. So um, me, for example, I'm non-interventionist. Uh, the government spends roughly a quarter out of every dollar that I give to them um, to maintain this military empire uh, that I don't agree with. So let's say I agreed with everything else the government is doing, which yeah. don't, but yeah. for the sake of argument. Yeah. Um, 
and I sent the government three quarters of what they told me I owed them in taxes. Yeah. They're going to put three quarters of you in jail. <laughs> yeah, pro- probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening to the other court. Yeah. Uh, it's getting blown up overseas. So, okay. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it, that's exactly it. So the only reason that I give the government all the money that they claim that I owe them yeah. um, is because I am uh, afraid of the consequences. Yeah. They are coercing me into giving this money. Yeah. Um, if you... It, Taxes are not a voluntary program. And you know what's funny is that um, that it could be. Yeah. Now, there are, uh, there are instances where um, polities of some sort or another have uh, done taxation or um, made uh, government payments to government voluntary. Yeah. Is not worked out well. Yeah. <laughs> I can't like, imagine They did not, not like, get the money that they expected. Yeah. But it, like, imagine today. If um, government tried to fund itself by crowdfunding, like yeah. like so many people do, yeah. um, businesses and hey, you want a new so road? Let's let's what do they call it? GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, but imagine if okay, so we want this. Uh, this is how much money we need to support the space program. Yeah. This is how much money we need to for this program, for that program, et cetera, et cetera. And gave people the option of like going online, finding the thing, you know, like a well, there's, um, like a registry, you yeah, know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. gave people the option of going online and committing what they thought was important to the projects that they thought were important. Well, and I think that a lot, I think some projects would do fairly well. Like there probably I, are some. I think the space program, actually, believe it or not, I think that that one would do well. I think there's a lot of people that that just think that that's the way to do space and would mm-hmm. would devote money to that. Mm-hmm. Um, the wars overseas, I don't think so much. No, I, I, I agree. Um, I mean, but there would be people contributing there, but it, like, imagine if government funded itself that way. Yeah. But think about the amount of money it takes to run our military. Like you, there's no, like, I think you could, and maybe I'm just like, I'm kind of talking on my ass a little bit, but I think that you could get the money you need to run the space program. I think that people would really rally behind that. I don't think they would really rally behind the wars and such. Like, I just don't think that that money, I don't think there's, while there's people who believe in it, I don't think they believe in it with their dollars. And the people that believe in the space program believe in it with their money. Yeah. Well, I I think that you're probably right. Um, I mean, I I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, my point here really is that Actually, like if you wanted it to be a volunteerist society, you could do things that way. Oh, yeah. And the, that the reason they don't probably isn't just tradition. Yeah. <laughs> it's that they understand yeah. that they wouldn't be funded. Yeah. Or the programs that they really want to fund, like the military empire, oh, would not be funded. Right. That's not making um, it. <laughs> so anyway, getting back to the point, though, uh, if I if I threaten you with you know, abduction and imprisonment or heavy, heavy fines anyway, or, you know, just violence of some, so, some yeah. form. It has to get to violence at some point because you right. can do the fines all day long, but if there's no violence at the end of those fines, yeah, if there's it no doesn't really violence, matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then no one would ever At pay. some point, people with guns have to show up. Mm-hmm. And, and they do. Yeah. Um, but if I were to do that to you, even if I take the money and do something good with it, if I go fund, um, you know, meals for homeless children or whatever this great, you know, thing that I'm doing, this, you know, kind thing, this uh, charitable thing that I'm doing with your money. Yeah. It's still theft. <laughs> In every way. <laughs> right? Yeah. So um, if, if an individual doesn't have the authority to go take money from somebody else for a project that they think is real important, yeah. then they can't transfer that authority to a government. Yeah. Right? So even if it's government behind it, the morals remain the same. Essentially, yeah. you're, you're talking about that there's a moral equivalency yeah. um, between the individual and the government. Becoming a part of a government, a, a collective does not have any more power to use violence, any more moral authority yeah. to use violence against people than an individual does. Even if you call uh, it a government. I mean, that's what we believe. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's why taxation is theft. Yeah. Um, is because if I were to do it to you, it's theft. And it's no different if a government does. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I'm, of course, reminded. Like, I don't know. There's, there's this weird idea out there 
that somehow people like that that those in government are public servants that they are there to you know you've heard selflessly <laughs> you've heard a lot about this since the queen passed yeah selfless service that type of thing yeah and and i mean truth be told it would be nice if that was the reality but that mm -hmm. will never be the reality yeah. like people in government are serving their self yeah people are self interested period yeah that, i mean that's the truth of it and it's just um, human nature it can't be helped you know to to quote the quote of Captain Malcolm Reynolds, <laughs> once again, government is a body of people, usually notably ungoverned. Notably ungoverned. I love it. <laughs> so, um, so what we come, what we come around to, like what we try and talk about as libertarians is like, what, what is, what is the equality that's important? And, um, you know, we've talked about equality on this podcast a lot and the kind of equality that most people are chasing is just, is impossible. It's pie in the sky. Yeah. Um, it's just not true because going back again to people are individuals. Yeah. Like they don't have the same sets of traits or skills or ambitions or interests or whatever. Like whether you're looking at, at um, equality of opportunity or equality of result, it can't be done. It's just not possible. But guess what system provides the most equality for the most people? I don't know. It's capitalism. Or like laissez-faire capitalism. Yeah, like free, true, free enterprise. Yeah, free enterprise. It, it, when you're talking about an economic system, that's certainly true. Yeah. Um, I mean, that what gets mo more people working together that normally wouldn't? I mean, that's, that, that's what's going to do it. Yeah, um, a, a real free enterprise system it encourages cooperation. Yeah. Like, even in competition, cooperation is encouraged. Uh, businesses compete to cooperate with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, with the consumer. Yeah. Um, and I was talking with uh, um, my physical therapist the other day about this and, um, you know, why this is, why government interfer interference in the market is such a problem. And the, the, the results of government um, control of the markets or interference in the markets is this primarily. It's that in a free enterprise system, like I said, businesses are competing to cooperate with you. Um, the, the way to get ahead in the, in a free enterprise system is to, uh, be the best at, um, satisfying the customers. Serving your customers the best. Right. But when you start getting government involved in the markets where, where government starts to control various aspects of the market and can start picking winners and losers and so forth, the, um, the businesses are no longer interested in providing what they can to you, the consumer, their new customer essentially becomes the government. Yeah. And so they're more interested in doing what they can for the government to get favorable legislation and, and what have yeah. you to force their product upon you. <laughs> well, and that's otherwise a, the relationship is voluntary. Yeah. And that's a lot of what's wrong with social media right now is just that where you've got the government. There's a lot wrong with social media in general, but particularly as far as just the government having such a heavy hand in with these companies, like there's, there's no just, I don't know. There's, it's not, it's not a free market out there. No, no. Um, and you know, going back to like, uh, what was the, um, free and open internet legislation that, oh, um, that Obama passed and was repealed? I can't uh, remember the name of it. Oh gosh. I don't remember anyway, uh, either, but, uh, the point of that is that I, the reason I bring that up is because um, that legislation was written by the biggest players in the market. It yeah. was written by uh, Alphabet and, um, you know, all these huge um, companies. internet companies. Yeah. And, and of course, it and was written was that it way. who was it favor? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. written in the way it was to eliminate their competition or raise the barrier to entry to prevent as much competition as possible. Absolutely. Um, and I, I would say that that's, that's what all legislation does. Yeah. All legislation well, of the and market. You want, and just to kind of reiterate for people, you want as much competition in these markets as you can. You don't want there to be just a couple of big conglomerates that control everything. Mm -hmm. you, want, you want a bunch of smaller companies that are vying for market share. Yeah. Because that's, that's how the consumer gets the best deal. Uh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I like if the, 
if government was in the shoe business, there would be two kinds of shoes, big and little, yep. and they'd be the same color. And, you know, it's like there's no reason to provide anything more. Exactly. Right? Um, but <laughs> go walk into a shoe store right now. Oh, yeah. In a free market. Absolutely. Um, there's uh, because the, all these various businesses vying for your money um, are uh, have to separate themselves in one way or another. And so uh, you get um, a huge variance in the kinds of qualities that are available in a shoe. And you get to choose the one that's right for you. Yep. So there's a, 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 a large range of sizes, uh, colors, styles, um, intents. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. um, there's, uh, you know, the, the best quality and the best, um, you know, the best deals, uh, you can buy based on, um, you know, just like a status level you can buy based on the, I, anyway, I could go on and on like yeah. this, but you know, the, the point is that when you, when you limit competition in a market, which legislation always does, uh, you end up with fewer and generally worse products. Absolutely. Um, but so the, you know, the question remains like what kind of equality are, are libertarians interested in? Yeah. Right. What would you say? I mean, I didn't prepare. No, no. I didn't <laughs> care I mean, for this at all. So no, like, it's totally putting them on the spot. No, it's fine. I mean, libertarians, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's all about individual freedom. So, I mean, that's really what it boils down to. Equality of freedom? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the same freedom for everybody. So everybody should have the well, same. Well, but what if, uh, you know, I, it's not true, but let's say yeah. Yeah. that in the Soviet Union, yeah. um, there was the same level of freedom for everybody. It just wasn't very much. <laughs> it just wasn't. Yeah. Well, that's a problem. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's not what we're going for either, right? Yeah. Um, well, obviously. Yeah. You know, and so uh, like the, you know, there's been arguments made, well, it's absolute freedom because if you have complete freedom, then everybody has the same well, I mean, level a, of freedom. I'm a volunteerist. So, I mean, I think that every, every interaction should be voluntary. Well, and okay. you start there as the starting point. Yeah. And that, and that, like, that puts us on the path of like, what kind of equality is important to libertarians? Yeah. Um, and so... Like the best answer that I've come across, like yeah. the the one that I like. Uh, so yeah. you can, you know, another thing that let me address another one though that comes up a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot of libertarians talk about equality under the law. Okay. All right. So. Well, I don't think there should be a law. So. <laughs> there's always law. Well, there always it doesn't is have law. to come down from government, and that's kind of the interesting thing about law, right? Yeah. Is that the laws are actually like. The real enforcement mechanism is society or community or or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's there's no need for a government codification of law because what really rules you is not the government law it's the law of the people that you are interacting with yeah like this is what keeps you in line so that you can maintain your interactions oh i agree with that people are primarily social yeah like even if you're antisocial like me like you're still social you yeah. like you do you do want interaction and you want um you know like favorable interactions with people yeah. and in order to maintain that to in order to maintain peaceable interactions with people, there's a bunch of laws. A lot of them aren't written down. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with that <laughs> but wholeheartedly. Yeah, there's yeah. a whole bunch of rules that we all follow yeah. so that we can, you know, maintain our place. Yeah. Uh, to participate in society as peaceably as possible. Okay. Right? Um, and, you know, like I, I've said a few times recently, because I, I read that, like I, I hadn't really, you know, I was making the argument, well, equality under the law too. Um but I, I had this niggling issue with that. Well, but the law's not applied equally. Yeah. And so what we want, though, is equality under the law. But this is probably again something that can but never actually be. When um, I hear that, equality under the law, though, I just think of these like laws like we have now, like these harsh laws that that are just stupid. Like, yeah. Once again, you know, equal freedom, if there's not a lot of it, doesn't mean a lot. Yeah. 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 That's, that's kind of where my mind goes when you yeah. say that. And that's the reason I kind of responded yeah. with no law at all. Like, yeah. that's not really what I mean, but it's just, I worry about the tyrannical government. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, in terms of no one above the law, this is obviously a, a, a fantasy. Yeah. Um, the, and, and I have been persuaded recently that the, the idea of the rule of law is just a myth anyway. Yeah. Um, that it doesn't exist. There are people that are above the law there. And yeah. you know, you see it all the time in the uh, political class in this country. Yeah. Um, 
what some of us would be thrown in prison for for years, uh, they get off with, uh, you know, a fine. Yeah. And maybe some probation or something like that. Obviously, like the people you know within the system makes a difference. And yeah. even if even if it wasn't that kind of favoritism, um, ha- being having access to a more talented, competent attorney yeah. makes a difference. Having money makes a difference in the legal system. Oh, it, absolutely. Um, it does in ours currently. Like, yeah. I mean, I've watched that sword come down a couple of times. Yeah. So the I, I do think that, uh, like, I've gotten on board with the idea that the rule of law is a myth. Yeah. Um, it, it's a myth as much as the divine right of kings um, that's just used to keep people in line. Yeah. Right? Um, so what is the equality that does matter? And um, and the best answer that I've that I've found really goes back to the Lockean idea of equality of authority. Okay. That essentially no one is subject to someone else. Yeah. Um, now you can create relationships that are that way, but inherently, yeah, no one. But is it's subject still a voluntary else. type situation, right? And yeah. um, because all relationships are inherently unequal. Yeah. Like they just there's, are. There's no way to completely um, ever level the playing field. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, and this is why I want to expound on this idea of equality of authority is that relationships are inherently unequal. It takes two people to enter a relationship. Yeah. But it only takes one to end it. Yeah. Right. Like no matter what kind of relationship yeah, you're talking regardless about, regardless <laughs> of the situation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. Only only one. So they are always unequal. You can't, if you don't want a relationship to end, but the other party does, there's nothing you can do about it, or there should be nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Um, Other than try to sway the person to stay. Yeah. Make one attempt and then give up. Yeah. That's that's my (laughs) advice. (laughs) Well, yeah. I would agree with that, but yeah. (laughs) Make one attempt. Here, I'm still interested. Yeah. Call me if you want. If you don't hear anything, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's over. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, even in ti- in business time. No, I, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I think in all relationships, yeah. um, there's this, you know, but it's not actually a difference in authority because what makes it an equality of authority there is that either side can be the one that ends it. Yeah. Right. Like that's absolutely that's yeah. the that's kind of the ideal that you're going for. Um, and, and part of this is, uh, like part of the explanation for that, um, is that libertarians for the most part, I hate to like speak of libertarians, like it's some kind of monolith cause it's definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for the most part, uh, libertarians see liberty, not as a liberty to do something, yeah, but freedom from coercive interference from others. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. It's like, it's not the freedom to do something. It's the freedom from something. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Or, or freedom from somebody else using violence or coerc- uh, coercion to force your hand. Yeah. Right. Um, and this is why, uh, you know, and go back to the classic, um, the, the Liberty Mike classic uh, on rights. Yeah. Um, this is why we only believe in negative rights. Yeah. Right. Because any kind of positive rights, and and for those that don't know the difference, like negative rights. Okay. So the example I like to use is um, in the Bill of Rights, uh, where you have the right to an attorney. Yeah. Okay. Um, The difference between negative and positive rights is that your right to an attorney sounds like a positive right. Yeah. Like that you can you can get an attorney to represent you. Yeah. But it's actually a negative right. It means that the the government can pro- cannot prevent you from bringing an attorney to your defense. Yeah. But it doesn't compel any t- attorney to work for you. Yeah. Like, if you can't find an attorney to work for you, you don't actually have the right to make them. Yeah. yeah. Right? There's no coercive right there. Yeah. Um, there's only the, the right to prevent the government from interfering with you Having gaining one. this counsel. Yeah. But it doesn't give you the right to interfere with the council to force them to represent you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, At so, least that's the idea, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, public attorneys and so forth. But yeah. um, 
But even they, they're not really compelled. They chose that job. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, they yeah. they knew what they were getting into. Yeah. And they don't do very good representation most of the time either. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well. it all evens out. Um, but, no, this is, this is why uh, we only believe in negative rights, is because any positive right is actually a coercive interference with somebody else. Yeah. Which is the reason a right to health care is a problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, because if a doctor doesn't want to treat you now, they have their own moral codes and so forth. But yeah. if a doctor doesn't want to treat you, you don't have the right to enslave them to work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like the difference between, um, a slave and an employee is the ability to leave the relationship. Yeah. And I, I know that there's, there are people out there listening to this podcast that are saying, well, I don't have the ability to leave my job to go to something else because I can't find anything better. So that makes me a slave. Yeah. No, disagree. <laughs> yeah. You can, you have the capability, there's, you have the authority. There's always an option. Yeah. You have the authority though, is the point that to end yeah. that relationship, just like the employer does. Yeah, absolutely. Um, even if it's not good for you. No, in common, so no, if, if you're staying, it's yeah. not because you can't leave, like you actually are forced to stay in the job. It's because you're making a choice that where you are is better than where you would be. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like communist Russia where like you absolutely have to do this job <laughs> yeah. or go to jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll lay, you know, maybe yeah. debtor's prison, but we don't have debtor's prison. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, I guess that really kind of brings us back around to the, the taxation is theft thing, right? Yeah. Is that you can't be coerced to give money even for a good cause. Yeah. Um, and if you can't have it done by an individual, you can't have it done by the government. And the government can't force you um, to work a particular job any more than any other individual can. Yeah. And I would say, actually, that most um, employer-employee relationships in this country, um, it's there's not an equality of authority. And actually, the uh, the employer has less authority than the employee. Yeah. Um, in a lot of cases, in, with the um, regulations and laws that are in this country, it's a whole lot harder to fire an employee than for an employee to quit. Yeah. Oh, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Um, At least in a lot of states. I don't know. You know, and, and that brings us back again to the, um, you know, the any kind of relationship is that both parties have the authority to leave the relationship, but neither party has the authority to force the other to stay in it. Yeah. All right. So, again, negative rights, not positive rights. Gotcha. And, uh, and that's the only kind of, um, of equality that is, that's possible yeah. i would say yeah um because because we're all individuals but at least our our interactions we can have the same ability to leave them yeah and and that's the goal of a voluntarist society that's the goal yeah that's the goal period <laughs> right. um and you know going around to the other side of this like my personal opinion is that um that they're there is no government that um, where there's an equality of authority. Yeah. That it j is just not, even if it's set up that way, it won't remain yeah. that way. And if you think about, again, the, the whole idea of a public servant, um, that the, the people of the government in the United States that are supposed to be representing you are supposed to be, you know, the servants of you, that they're, um, your representatives, your public representation, your the public servant, you know, the um, serving the people, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know from your interactions with government officials that that is not the case. <laughs> if you've ever been to any of those meetings, you'll learn that pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the so in, in a legal sense, what you would want is, um, when you talk about equality of authority, is that uh, that you and the judge and the law enforcement agent, et cetera, et cetera, all have the same level of authority. Yeah. Um, now, this seems like it's not really possible, and I, I do understand that like when you get into the nuance uh, of things, the practicality of things, um, that, that you should only be in any kind of legal peril if you have violated this to begin with. Yeah. Um, if you have... Uh, you know, forced somebody into something in one way, you know, shape or form. Yeah. Um, but 
the the idea is that um, that you would have the same legal status, the same authority in day to day life as any of these other as any of these other people. Yeah. And the reality is that you absolutely don't. Oh no, you absolutely don't. <laughs> Um, what was the what's the Dave Smith thing where he's like, if you ever thought of if you think a policeman is a public servant, yeah. that they work for you, go try that. Go sometime. try that. Yeah, <laughs> just go round up a bunch of cops and start telling them what to do. Yeah, you'll find out real quick who works yeah. for who. <laughs> yeah. And um, so you know, a libertarian legal system would be uh, you know community based. Yeah. Um, and uh, and well, a law enforcement system also would be community based. It would all be privately controlled yeah. um, that way there's consequences well and the and local always works out better because the 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 bad apples will get rooted out in the system that's based locally a lot more efficiently than one that's massive and huge that's that's ruled from people thousands of miles away yeah if it's easier to maintain a an equitable hate to use that word even because it's going to be misinterpreted um but an equitable society on a small scale yeah um when people know each other there's also it's actually kind of the same problem as um when government interferes in the market that the businesses are now catering to the government instead of catering to the consumer yeah when you have um a, a legal system that is remote yeah um then um it, it's easy to you're still more accountable to your citizens. Right. I mean, yeah, I should have taken it from the other side, right? Yeah. Like um, when you have a, a local, when you have a real community, um, there's a stronger pressure to uh, exist within that community following the community's rules. Yeah, absolutely. Right. There's more consequences um, to an individual uh, in a community to be ostracized in some way from that community yeah. um, than than at a at a larger level where you can be kind of anonymous. Yeah. Absolutely. And um and I, I saw this over and over so I studied anthropology in college and um I, I saw this over and over again in small scale societies that the the way they maintained peace and order um mostly was through humiliation. Yeah. Um that uh you know the but okay but at the same time, they really did care for the members of their community, even the people that weren't pulling their weight. Yeah. Um, they still took care of them. They just gave them a bunch of crap about it in the yeah, process. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know. Um, I mean, they didn't let, just let them go die. They, ju- they right. still took care of them, but, but it wasn't pleasant for them at the same time. Right. There was and a, it was an encouragement. The, the way I envision it is an encouragement for them to do better. To participate. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it, it was a way of trying to encourage them to, um, to play their part. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and everybody knew the score Yeah. because everybody knew everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I don't want to like regale you with specific stories. There were some really interesting, yeah. um, stories though, that I came across about, uh, in these small scale societies of, you know, the you know, the one person that didn't really pull their weight um, yeah. and um, how they took advantage of the system. But everybody knew. Yeah. Like it was yeah. all, everybody was aware and there were, I mean, there were consequences, but it was social consequences. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's interesting to think about, but at the same time, I, I would imagine the pushback from your more status type people would probably be, yeah, but you can't manage cities and stuff that way. Um, well, I mean, it's, uh, really what is a city, but a whole bunch of interactive communities. Well, and that's, well, the argument I would make is I still think when you have, even if you're talking about like a city the size of New York or something like that, mm-hmm. like you still have, like you say, like smaller little segments of the city that. Yeah. New York is actually a great example because the neighborhoods are actually yeah. like kind of the ultimate like small scale. Unit. Yeah, yeah small scale society type thing, like little mm. areas that all kind of manage themselves and take care of one another. Right. I mean, that's what, I've never been to New York, so I'm kind of speaking that term. But that, I mean, I, I that's what I would envision. I've never lived there, well, so yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, that's you know, that's a lot of the story that you get from New York is um, you know the the boroughs and then the um, the 
uh, neighborhoods within the boroughs. Yeah. Um, you know, things aren't perfect, but you know, people know each other. People take care. People know who the drunk is and who the you know, yeah, whatever. And they get by. Like you know, everybody. Yeah. There is um, there is a level of camaraderie at the community level. Yeah. Even even in a big city or mm -hmm. metropolitan or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with that. And I would I would argue that still at the end of the day, the the politicians in those bigger cities are still accountable to the people that live in those cities. Yeah. Um, but you have the problem of scale. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, You're still a, a small fish in a big ocean. Yeah. It, well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. Um, you know, that's one of the things about like the president of the United States is that the like every individual like no individual in the United States really feels like they get to select the president in any way yeah or have really any impact any impact at all on the result and I'm just saying during the campaign Biden kind of used that full force like some of the stuff he said to people on the campaign trail was just crazy yeah <laughs> like, you mean some of like the fights he had with yeah, people, like, yeah. You know, push up challenges and whatever I don't know yeah um just weird stuff just kind of aside but yeah yeah um, and so, but that's, you know, that creates a problem because the truth is that there's so many people involved that, that he's not accountable. It's like, it's like a lynching, right? Yeah. Like, um, that you spread out the responsibility to such a level that nobody's really responsible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that's not, that's yeah. not a positive thing. Yeah. That's not um, what you want. And, uh, <laughs> we're getting really off track, but it made me think of, uh, I was talking with a friend the other day. He was asking me about um, the reservations yeah. and uh, like Indian reservations, Indiv yeah, and um, like what I thought about that. And he he was saying, you know, well, but I don't I don't understand. Like there was a war, they lost. Why did we give them land? Yeah, like that's not how it works. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't know why we they should have their own sovereignty uh, over these lands, like. They lost. And I was like, well, yeah, but they lost all the rest of the land. I, I, yeah. I said, well, well my, this is really what it... My, okay, retort, my retort to that just would be, sure, I mean, even the losing side still gets to negotiate a peaceful end, right? I yeah, mean, that would if be there's my... there's any left. Well, that, yeah. yeah. Well, that would be my <laughs> argument, though. I mean, obviously, there are still some, and it would just make sense to me that, yeah, you, were, you negotiate a peaceful end to it, mm -hmm. and if that means you give them a hunk of land that they can be sovereign on... That seems fair to me. Yeah. I, Not what, saying what we did to the Indians was fair because I obviously don't agree with that either, yeah. but just logistically. Well, that was the point that I made, um, the, that, it wasn't, uh, that it wasn't okay to begin with. I said, you know, the, the way they lost the territory that they had before was through, through force and violence. Yeah. Um, it, it was an immoral taking of what they had before, so I definitely don't begrudge them what they've been given yeah you know as absolutely reparations yeah um and you know it's not to it's not to make the argument that that all land that ever belonged to anybody else should be given back no um that's certainly not the case like what's done is done yeah um and the people that are occupying the land now aren't responsible for the immoral it taking of into, it yeah. in the first place exactly um you know that doesn't justify it but like it's water under the bridge now. Like there's, yeah. it can't be rolled back. Yeah. Right. Like it's too late to, to roll it back. Yeah. Um, but hopefully, uh, we have, uh, become more civil, um, as a culture generally, or as humanity as a whole or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say looking around, that's, that's obviously not true either. <laughs> right. Um, but, uh, the, you have to, at least I, I think that you should maintain the idea um, that, uh, that you should look at the morality of the situation to begin with. And, um, you know, you can't, you can't argue against, you know, the, the reparations to the, um, to the Indian tribes at the time when they lost that war no. and say, well, you know, like, this is the way of the world might makes right. Like this is not the, yeah. if, um, if we settled on the idea that, um, that something can be taken from you 
if you don't have the power to defend it, then that's okay. Then it's just lost. I don't think that that's the kind of society that any of us would want to live in. No, I would agree with that. You know, and it comes around. I don't know if we uh, said this on the podcast, but you know, I, was, I, I know that I was talking. I, th- I think it might have just been in a, a private conversation, but where I was talking to you about the, um, like the kind of the libertarian version of the golden rule. Yeah. Um, the the reverse golden rule. I don't know that I've ever done this on the podcast, but this is this is actually a good time for it. Yeah. Um, because it relates to what we've been talking about this whole time anyway. Yeah. Um, which is like the golden rule as we as we all learned it as children is uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah. All right. Um, the the libertarian version is is like the the obverse, I guess, yeah. of that. Um, reverse. Ob- anyway. I don't remember how all these terms apply. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm like down on my, um, my weird, my weird logic rules, but, <clears throat> or, uh, yeah. Um, terms. Yeah. But anyway, the, the libertarian version of this is, uh, do not do unto others what you would not have them do unto you. Yeah. Like that's really your limitation. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, you have the freedom to do what you want. But the, and and I do like uh, I assume it came from somewhere else. But um, I always liked Chris Ann Hall's definition of liberty, yeah. um, which is freedom plus morality, yeah. right? Um, so like you have the freedom to do what you want. Now the the morality is where you refrain from doing things that you wouldn't want what, done have, to you. Came back at you. Yeah. 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 Um, so why don't you take other people's stuff? It's not because it's immoral in and of itself to take other people's stuff, although I think it is. Yeah. Um, but really the, the reason that you don't take other people's stuff is that you don't want to grant them the ability to do that to you as well. Absolutely. Because that's really the result. Yeah. Um, if you start making and karma's, rules that... I don't know. I've always been a believer. Karma is a thing, man. Like yeah. Like it, it, you know, it's, it happens. <laughs> Evidence to the contrary, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I do understand what you mean. And, and it's a, it's certainly a good way to approach your interactions with people. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think that that's probably like the rule that you would want to set here. Like yeah. this is our moral rule is that, um, that you don't want to, um, uh, to act towards anyone else in a way that you wouldn't want them acting towards you. Yeah. Um, that that's, that's the limitation on your freedom. Um, is the, is what you wouldn't want other people to be able to do. Yeah. So that's where you stop too. Yeah. And that's how we can exist. All peacefully. peacefully. In a volunteerist society. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have any more to say. I don't know that this came out in the narrative that I kind of expected it to. <laughs> well, you um, had me here, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's not the reason. Yeah. I, like, um, let's sum up. All right. Okay. Um, taxation is theft because self-ownership or, or individual sovereignty is the basis of Western representative government philosophy. Well, yeah. not because of that. Um, self-ownership is the starting point of any kind of morality uh, that deals with property rights or, or individual rights. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's coming out of the natural rights tradition. Yeah. Right. So the starting point is self ownership, um, and that natural rights tradition is the basis of uh, of Western representative government. Right. Um, so the individual is sovereign. Uh, all government authority is granted to the government from the individuals. The individuals agreed, essentially made a contract to transfer some of their authority to the government to help them maintain a peaceful society. Therefore, um, a government cannot have any authority that an individual does not. Because you can't grant authority that you don't have. Yeah. Right? Um, and the only equality that matters is equality of authority. And again, that's, that's Lockean. Um, that even though all relationships are inherently unequal, because you have to agree to enter, but it, you don't have to agree to separate. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. It only takes one person to, to separate, to end a, uh, to end a relationship. Yeah. Any kind of relationship. Um, but because, uh, liberty is not, as we see it, is not the freedom to do something. It's the, the freedom from others acting coercively upon you. Yeah. All right. It's the freedom from coercive interference. 
Um, and this is the idea of, of negative rights. The rights are only things that, um, that others can't interfere with morally. Yeah. Of you doing. Um, and so uh, the equality of authority um, comes back around to that, that everybody has an equal right to end any relationship that they're in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, that no person is subject to another, that no person can be coerced to maintain a relationship that they do not want. Yeah. Right. And this kind of comes around to that Spooner stuff that I talk about all the time where he's saying that, um, that people subjected to a government that they do not want is just as much slavery as shadow slavery. It's just a difference of degree, not of kind. Yep. Um, that it is just another form of slavery. All right. And so then for all these reasons, um, you cannot coercively take, an individual cannot coercively take money from somebody else morally. Yeah. Um, no matter what the purpose of the money is, even if it's the most moral thing, what they're, what they plan to do with it. Yeah. Like the highest of virtues, Still up what to they the plan individual to do with it. To the side that right. this is what they want to do with that money. If they take it through force or the threat of force, it's theft. Yeah. And since, uh, the authority of government is granted from individuals and an individual does not have, does not have the authority to take money from somebody without their permission. Neither does the government. Absolutely. And therefore taxation is theft. Yes, it is. <laughs> Did I sum it up? All right. I think so. All right. Well, that was a pretty good walk through. Okay. Yeah. Um, if there are things unclear, like send me an email, I'll address them again. Uh, do I do real we're already pushing an hour, but um, I do really quickly want to uh, address the, the goings on um, with the Russia Ukraine thing. Absolutely. Um, so I don't know. There's some weird stories out there. Yeah. Um, like I, I heard from somebody at my office the other day that the Russians were uh, conscripting um, people between 18 and 65 and they were conscripting a million people and they had shut down their borders and um, so no one could leave and well, all and, kinds of stuff. And like we were talking before the podcast, so um, I was watching, I think it was PBS News Hour. It was whatever mm. the public broadcasting news is. Um, and so they used the word, um, what was it? Were they conscription? I think no, no, no. The other word for um, reserves. Oh, they yeah, yeah they were calling they, up reserves. They, ca yeah. they they said they were calling up three three hundred thousand reserves, mm -hmm. um, but then immediately bolted into um, people trying to flee the country and 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 acting not using the word conscription, but had the the tones of cons conscription in the in the piece that I was watching. Okay, and it that it, at least seems closer to the truth. Well, yeah, it, but it was still, it, you're right, it's closer, but it was, even watching, I was like, this they're, This is very contradictory. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is not what, I, I can tell this is not what's going on. Yeah. Well, um, this is what I understand is going on. Um, and I, I read Putin's speech, well, translation of Putin's speech, um, the comments by uh, Sergei Shoigu, who's their Ministry of Defense yeah. um, guy, uh, afterwards, you know, clarifying some, or actually providing more detail on some of the things. Um, they're doing a partial mobilization. Yeah. Now, this is kind of a weird term anyway. Yeah. Um, but it looks like, you know, it's kind of what we talked about last week, um, where they're they're shifting from a special military operation to more of an open war. Yeah. Uh, like an openly declared war. Yeah. Um, so, but what I understand that they're doing is that they are mobilizing uh, people that are in the reserves. Yeah that weren't on active duty. Yeah. Um, and they're bringing, now Putin didn't say how many, uh, but Sergei Sho Shoigu said, um, 300,000. Yeah. They're bringing up 300,000 reservists. And that the plan for them was that they would go, um, take the posts of regular, uh, full-time Russian military within Russia. Um, so that they could free up those active troops to go fight in Ukraine. Yeah. Now, what we're seeing here, though, um, is, is what Russia has had the capability of doing this whole time. Yeah. Right? Like, they have actually, I know that your this, news is telling you something very different, but yeah. they have actually conducted a very civil... Restraint. Yeah. Yeah. During this, this 
fighting so far. Yeah. Um, they have been operating to try and preserve as many of their own troops as possible. They have been operating to try and uh, keep um, civilian casualties low. Uh, they have not, until very recently, um, attacked any civilian infrastructure that didn't have a military purpose. Yeah. Um, they... Uh, this Putin, is, this is kind has, of the gloves coming off. Yeah, um, but he's he, you know, Putin feels like his hands being forced. I don't know if it's so much by the West yeah. um, as by uh, internal politics. Yeah, but um, they're they're ready to apply more force to achieve their goals. Do you think? Any and of they've this... been able to do this the whole time, and they haven't. Yeah. And they've reached a point where they're. And I, I don't think that this is actually representative of them doing badly. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's more of a, a recognition of how involved the collective West is in the defense of Ukraine. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I don't think this is. That. Yeah. I don't think that this would have been at all necessary if Ukraine had been left to its own yeah. this whole time. I think that this would long since have been over. Um, well, do you think any of this has to do with them trying to get this wrapped up before winter hits? Yes. No. Not before winter. Um, because actually winter is good for the Russians. Like once, yeah, once everything freezes, yeah. um, they're really mobile again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I read some analyses that said that, you know, if Russia is really ready to commit um, these kind of troop numbers and ready to commit um, more aggressive attacks on infrastructure and so forth, yeah. uh, that they really could have this wrapped up by the end of this year. By the end of the year, yeah. Well, what do you think about the referendums and stuff in the um, Donbass and all those regions? Um, I think that, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Um, I appreciate that they're doing referendums. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's, you know, it's obviously for political purposes. Yeah. Um, it will be immediately ignored by the West as being coerced well, they, they've so they've already, uh, the West has already announced that. Um, yeah, n none of this can be yeah. real in occupied territory. Now, they are happening in, in areas that aren't on occupied, too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, is it... Uh, I think that the the Russians control all of Donetsk and huge portions of the Luhansk, um, yeah. but they're also doing um, referendums in uh, Kherson and uh, Zaporizhia. Yeah, um, and those areas aren't totally occupied by the Russians. Yeah. But um, I also saw an analysis of historical voting. Yeah, um, in Ukraine, like going back to the early nineties. Yeah, and uh, when they, you know they, when they became a separate. Yeah, entity. entity. Yeah. Um, and these areas of Ukraine have consistently voted pro-Russian. Yeah. yeah. So I suspect that there will be a kind of overwhelming support for joining the Russian Federation from these areas. Yeah. And I don't think that that's fake. Yeah. I mean, these areas have voted before to join Russia and chose not, and Russia didn't accept them. That's true. If if memory serves. Yeah. The, the Donbass region of, uh, uh, or the breakaway republics, as they say, the, the yeah. Donetsk and Luhansk, um, have both, uh, held referendums in the past to join the Russian Federation. Yeah. And, um, and Putin said, yeah, no, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, but you know, times have changed. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and I, I think, uh, you know, part of it is that, um, Russia is better able to, um, to defend and support those areas than they were previously. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so regardless of how badly you're hearing that the, this operation is going for Russia in Western media, it's, I mean, I could be wrong. I, I'm not, um, I'm not a necessarily a skilled military analyst or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I'm reading sources from all sides. Essentially you can ignore almost anything that comes out of either Ukraine or Russia. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you, you have to rely on other sources, um, which is hard to do. It, it's hard to, there, there are, however, individuals that, um, seem to be presenting pretty unbiased analysis, analyses. Um, you know, there's of course the moon of Alabama who I like, uh, I found a YouTube channel from, um, that's like the Austrian military's 
training channel. Yeah. Um, where they have uh, this colonel that's doing uh, report. Now these are like strictly tactical reports. Yeah. Um, about like what's going on in these various on battles the and so yeah. forth. Uh, but those are really interesting too. Um, there's of course you know Douglas McGregor stuff. Yeah. Um, he's at least a break away from the the U.S. status quo in terms of his analysis of what's going on. Um, there are also like individual sources within Russia and within Ukraine that seem to be um, less intent on propaganda. Yeah. So you you know you just try and you try and look at a lot to... of sources and then suss out what's what's real Absolutely. and what's not. But um, I mean, just in a just in a general sense, um, even with all the Western support for Ukraine, uh, Russia has a better military. Yeah. And, um, and they haven't really applied like the full force of their military up to this point. Yeah. And, um, so I, I don't think that Ukraine can maintain against that. And I, the, and Putin has made it very clear that, um, nuclear weapons is on the table if they see a threat to the homeland. Yeah. Um, and I think that even though the general consensus for some reason <laughs> in um, U.S. military circles is that he would never actually use nuclear weapons, um, I think that that's an... an I, I think that there's enough force behind it to uh, prevent the West from actually like moving in and taking active part. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, I hope so too. <laughs> like. Um, this is not, this is not our problem. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sorry for the Ukrainians, uh, but they could have been out of this a long time ago yeah. too. Um, if you're what was it, April, I think somewhere in there, um, may, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but they were, uh, the Ukrainian government was negotiating with the Russian government. Yeah. Um, they had, uh, had come to something of an agreement, um, to, for a ceasefire in the end of hostilities, um, in Ukraine. And, um, uh, when it looked like the Ukrainian government was going to, to agree to this, Boris Johnson flew over there, had a meeting with, um, Zelensky and told him that while he may be ready to, well, Zelensky may be yeah. ready to sign an agreement, the collective West was not, and he needed to not uh, make this agreement. Yeah. Um, and then they, the, the Ukrainians pulled out of the agreement. Yeah. Uh, the West is willing to fight till the last Ukrainian. Right. Basically. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Lindsey Graham, I think, said almost exactly that. Yeah. Well, he would, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it was Lindsey Graham. It might not have been him. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, I hear his voice. His, like <laughs> <laughs> He seems like a likely culprit, yeah. so. Um, anyway. So we should have just let them, we should have just let them make an agreement. Yeah. They, they can't win this. They cannot win this. And this has been horrible for Ukraine in every possible way. Oh, without question. Yeah. And uh, it could have been done with months ago. They would have had to uh, probably give up some territory that they didn't really control anyway. Yeah. And. Yeah. I mean. Let that be that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. I'm not in charge here. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, on, on that happy note. Yeah. <laughs> again, we should have just stuck with the, you know, authority <laughs> stuff um, to end it. Something, something good. Tell us something good. I, I wish I had it, man. I know you do. Come on. <laughs> I'm working, but I ain't got it, man. All right. Well, you drank yeah. some. You drank some four roses over there. That was good. Right? That was good. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. It's gone though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't quite finished off mine. I wasn't drinking four roses though. Yeah. Um. All right. Well. Uh, we're, you know, we're a couple of days late. Here's the plan for the Liberty Mike podcast. Yes. We will do our very best to get you a podcast somewhere between Thursday and Monday. Yeah, there you go. That's our window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, these are the possible dates and times. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we haven't missed one in a while. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, not like a full week. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're, we're doing well. And, uh, but there is a warning that there may be some empty spaces in the future, depending on what happens with the storm. Yeah. Pray it misses us. Right. <laughs> right. 
because I, I really don't for, want any of my trees to come down. Yeah, me either. <laughs> I, I enjoy living. All in my yours house. came down last time. Yeah, but there's still more <laughs> though. Not all of them. <laughs> Enough of them. I got one that's leaning because of Sally, and I haven't gotten yeah. it removed yet. And oh my god, it's so expensive. Anyway. Yeah. Inflation, man. Yeah, it's not just inflation. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're going to wrap it up there now that we're just getting into silliness. And uh, we'll, yeah. you know, we'll, we plan to be back next week, sometime yes. between Thursday and Monday. Absolutely. Hopefully. Yep. We'll record at three in the morning if we have to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm completely down. <laughs> Because nobody could see me shaking my head <laughs> while I was saying that. Um, and, uh, yeah, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, or YouTube. Yeah. Um, like and share. Uh, leave comments. You can always email me at michael at Um You know, criticisms are welcome. Just be polite. Uh, otherwise, we'll ignore you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, tell your friends because that helps too. Absolutely. It all helps. Yep. And, um, you can do reviews as well in some of those places. Some at least, of them. Yeah. At least iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> I, that might be the only one. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. We plan to be back next week. Um, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later. Later.